Hi everyone, here are 6 tips to help your ruins adventure smoother. Number 1. Effective way to find ruins. From cave entrance to muddy biome, find the upper part of the cave. Then go the opposite way to find a grey road. Upper part is usually a wide area where we can get grass and twigs. If you can find the road, walk around the edge of the biome and eventually you will find a road. If your cave entrance is beside blue mushroom biome, the way to muddy biome is from blue mushroom area. This is a good cave entrance because we can get blue mushrooms for healing and sanity and living logs from lunar grotto. In muddy biome, walk around the edge to map the biome. If you find a bunny hutch set piece in white size muddy biome, that means ruins and trance will be within one of the roads connected from that biome. However, if the bunny hutch is in a small size area, it's not an indicator of anything. Keep going to find wider size muddy biome. I have a video where I try to find ruins and trance and ruins itself from 11 worlds with different size caves. You can check it from description link if you need help in finding ruins. But to keep it simple, look for a bunny hutch in a white muddy biome and ruins and trans will be nearby. Number 2. Precraft a pig house for fresh ham bath. Because it's always night time in ruins, pig men will not come out from their house. However, we can lure them out by putting a light source nearby their house during daytime. Usually, a fire camp or holding a lantern can bring the pig men out. We can know the time from the automatic save that pops in the beginning of a new day. Once they're out, give 4 monster meats to turn them into were pig. By the way, it's easier to get 4 monster meats from dead worm than dangling spiders. Note that when they come out from their house, if they go back home because of no light source around, let's say the fire camp is finished, they will not come out again until the next day. If you are in urgent need of hand bed and don't have the time to wait until next day time, place the pit house anywhere and destroy it with hammer to get the pit man inside. Number 3. The cave size. Whenever I create a new world, I always wonder, is bigger map size means more toolside status in ruins? In short, no. I tried generating 10 words from each size, from small, medium, large, and huge. Here are the results. I sort it from lowest amount of status to the highest and average number of status of each word size. A bigger word size usually make biomes become wider and more same biomes generated. But for biomes in ruins, it seems like only wild biome that usually become wider. The rest of the biomes that contain statues are pretty much the same across all world size. From this photo, we can see that the highest number of statues I got was from medium size cave. Even though the average number of statues is highest in huge world size, I suggest to keep the cave size setting as small or medium as it will shorten the time needed to travel from entrance to ruins and vice versa. Number 4. Four row. What the heck is four row and why I have to make it? I'm glad you asked. To put it simple, a four row is a mobile tent that we can use to sleep anytime and anywhere we want while in ruins, because it's always night time in this dangerous place. In ruins, we can easily gather food for hunger, but to restore health and sanity, relying on blue mushroom will make us constantly on low sanity. With fur roll, we can eat banana, lichen, or carrot, then sleep with fur roll to exchange hunger for health and sanity. I have tried several ruins rush and one fur roll literally saved me so much time compared to eating lichen or blue mushroom then have to keep fighting nightmare creatures from low sanity. Yes, we need nightmare fuels for Tulosat equipment, 
but I always have excess nightmare fuels by the time I gather enough tulisites and gems to craft what I want. The best part is full roll is so easy to make. We only need 9 cut grass to make straw roll from science machine and then add 2 bunny puff to upgrade straw roll into full roll from alchemy engine. Full roll restore 1 health and 1 sanity at the cost of 1 hunger in every second. I usually use this when I'm stuck during peak nightmare cycle, before fighting ancient guardian or any time I need to restore health and sanity. It has sweet 3 uses and guess what? You're right, we can use full roll to sleep in the dark without any light source. Yes, it's the same thing with tent, but in ruins every light source is precious. Man, full roll is so good. Number 5 Crop pot and fishing rod. A pre-crafted crop pot and fishing rod is very useful in ruins. We can fish two eels from the pond, cook it with two monster meats, and get a surf and turf that heals 60 health, 33 sanity, and 37.5 hunger. This way we have a strong healing option for ancient guardian fight or in case of emergency. For work mains, can make banana shake for 33 sanity and 25 hunger, then recover HP with fur roll. And for weaker bottom mains, can cook surf and turf as healing options, since weaker bottom cannot use fur roll to sleep. By the way, make sure there is no nightmare fissure around before placing your crock pot. Number 6, Bifalo. Bifalo is very useful in ruins as it helps to tank damage from nightmare creatures, shadow spell monkeys, and even earthquake damage. However, it is better to use Bifalo if we are already familiar with ruins mechanic because there will be a time when we suddenly buck off by Bifalo because we either forgot to feed it or the riding time is up, in which can lead to dangerous situation if we are being chased by mobs. Especially when we cannot ride it again immediately because of low obedience points. More about it in a while. Plus, sometimes there might be a tendency or a habit where we become less careful in ruins because we feel safe with 1k HP Bifalo guarding us, which might cause problems if we are careless. I tried rushing ruins and taming Bifalo at the same time. The 63 speed bonus and 1000 HP shield is very useful. However, the constant food asking sound from Bivalo is what I dislike the most because almost all the time when I'm not riding the Bivalo, it will back food from me. I like animals but taming a Bivalo in ruins rushing is definitely hurting my sanity in real life. However, if your Bivalo already fully domesticated and is an ordinary Bivalo, then it will be a very smooth sailing in ruins. To smoothen your Bifalo ruin strip, pre-craft a crock pot and cook 3 or 4 steam tweaks. Then feed 1 to 2 steam tweaks to your Bifalo before going to dangerous area. This is to avoid the possibility of not being able to ride the Bifalo because of low obedience point. Bifalo needs at least 50% obedience to let us ride it in which 1% obedience will go down every 3 seconds if the bifalo hunger is 0. But if the bifalo's hunger is above 0, the obedience will go down 1% every 9 seconds, or about 3 times slower. Also, using bifalo status tracking mods will help so much as the mod will help to show how long we can ride the bifalo before being bucked off and other details. I am using bifalo widget mod in my Ruins Rush with Bifalo, link on description box. And regardless of my opinion about Bifalo, Bifalo is very useful especially for low HP characters like Wes, Maxwell, and Walter. Since Walter will lose sanity whenever he takes damage, Bifalo is perfect for him. Thanks so much for watching. I apologize if my pronunciation is not that clear because English is not my first language, but I'll keep improving. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care and have a great day.